The Rise and Fall of Sean Diddy Combs. A dreamer by the name of Sean Combs lived in the dynamic heartbeat of New York City. Amidst the symphony of metropolitan rhythms, his dreams reached far over the towers, illuminating the streets of Harlem with an image of ambition. However, this dream was more than simply a passing fairy tale. It burned brightly into reality and set off a quest that would leave his name emblazoned in history. This is the story of Sean Combs, popularly known as Diddy, a story of success, struggle, and the unwavering quest for excellence. However, shadows dance beside the spotlight, just like in each story of triumph. The fundamental cornerstone of Diddy's legacy has been called into question by recent charges that have put a shadow over his formerly unassailable empire. A picture at odds with the glitz and glamour is painted by the swirling accusations, causing us to wonder how a youngster from Harlem rose to become the larger-than-life superstar we know today only to encounter such overwhelming difficulty. Nowadays, Diddy is navigating dangerous seas as lawsuits threaten and investigations get more in-depth. Homes being looted, colleagues being arrested, and a media empire being investigated. The headlines paint a picture of events that not even the most forward-thinking business people could have imagined. The claims of sexual assault and human trafficking are threatening to tear apart his legendary career as he stands away from the leadership of Revolt, the media behemoth he helped build. For a man who has openly characterized his life in terms of eras, this could be the most difficult chapter he has yet faced, a test that could cause even his unwavering resolve to crumble. But first, we must follow the ascent, the story of a young dreamer who dared to overcome the odds, to comprehend the collapse. So let's go back to the beginning to solve Sean Combs' mystery and discover the meandering path that brought us to Diddy. Sean's Early Life On November 4, 1969, Sean John Combs was born into the colorful fabric of New York City. But the real beginning of his journey was in the peaceful suburb of Mount Vernon. Raised by his father, Melvin Earl Combs, a man with connections to the volatile world of New York's underground, and his mother, Janice Combs, a model and devoted teacher's assistant, young Sean was plunged into a world where perseverance was a currency unto itself. At the young age of two, tragedy struck when his father was killed by the merciless streets, leaving Janice to raise Sean and his sister by herself. His mother worked five jobs to make ends meet, so he was instilled with the values of tenacity and determination at a young age. Sean was also raised in a deeply Catholic home and took comfort in his faith when faced with hardship. He does not, however, identify with any specific religious group. Rather, he follows a moral code that is based on the ability to distinguish between good and wrong. Combs emphasizes unity over separation across theological boundaries while expressing a belief in the existence of one God. He claims that he could pray in a church, a mosque, or a synagogue, demonstrating his appreciation for other places of worship. His interactions with contentious individuals and issues have nonetheless come under investigation. In an interview, Combs shared a thought-provoking belief that God is a woman, adding yet another layer to his complex and multifaceted worldview. When Diddy was a young boy, he started his own business as a paper boy. He took advantage of the chance to make money by offering to take on his friends' routes in return for a portion of their revenue. Combs entered the world of entrepreneurship thanks to this astute decision, and he rapidly made an incredible $1,000 per week while keeping all other channels to himself. Combs' work ethic, however, didn't end there. He worked as a busboy at a busy restaurant and as a gas pumper at a nearby station, among other jobs. For him, even the less glamorous jobs, like cleaning bathrooms, had meaning. Diddy approached every task with diligence and unflinching pride, taking pleasure in seeing the once dingy places transformed and people's faces light up as they exited. His resilience was matched only by his curiosity as evidenced by a summer spent with an Amish family in Pennsylvania, courtesy of the nonprofit Fresh Air Fund, an experience that broadened his horizons and fueled his hunger for more. 
As his mother sought to carve a better future for her family, she made the pivotal decision to relocate from the bustling streets of uptown Manhattan to the tranquil embrace of Mount Vernon, nestled in the heart of Westchester County. But beneath the workaholic exterior and his fervent religious convictions, Sean had a fire inside him that went beyond the classroom. His aspirations for ambition started to take root when he was a business student at Howard University. Even though his academic career was cut short, he never lost motivation to succeed. In 2014, the story completes the circle when Sean Combs returns to Howard University as a source of inspiration rather than as a student. He was given an honorary doctorate in humanities and stood in front of the graduating class to give the 146th commencement speech of the university. Sean Combs' famous nickname, Puffy, has its roots in the stormy waves he experienced as a young boy. As a child, he used to always huff and puff when he was angry. His temper got the better of him. For this reason, his pals began referring to him as Puffy. But even in the middle of the upheaval, Sean's character was shaped by perseverance and hard effort reflecting his mother's unwavering work ethic. When Sean Combs got to Washington, D.C.'s Howard University, he didn't take long to make his impression. In the late 1980s, when New York hip-hop culture was at its height, Combs made the most of his heritage by fully embracing the Empire State Connection, attracting attention at school with his dazzling clothes, lavish parties, and growing entourage, he became well-known Combs, however, was an astute businessman in addition to being a party enthusiast. He balanced several businesses while attending school, including operating a shuttle service, purportedly trading in used term papers, and even selling Pepsi and t-shirts. Combs saw an opportunity to turn the mayhem into business when student protests erupted and took over an administration building. He did this by making poster-sized collages out of newspaper clippings and selling them back to the participants. Combs was a regular at parties and clubs and had a certain charm. He attracted attention with his daring dress choices and self-assured manner, winning the respect of both peers and fans. His flashy dance routines and colorful appearance helped him establish a reputation as a cool, confident person who made an impression everywhere he went. Combs teamed up with his companion, Angeletti, and took advantage of his increasing power to plan events that drew large attendance and star power. Always the tactician, he made sure his name was printed large on marketing materials. He even etched Sean Puffy Combs with pride in the lower left corner of his first business card. The pair continued to light up the party scene as their momentum grew, holding almost a weekly gathering for the following two years. One memorable occasion, was a Masonic Temple homecoming celebration, which was originally scheduled to draw a small crowd of 1,500 people. However, the attraction of their gatherings proved too strong, bringing an astounding 4,500 guests. The celebrations became so intense that the DC police got involved, closing the entire area and bringing in dogs. Combs and his friends ended up on their knees begging the authorities for mercy in a last-ditch effort to keep themselves out of jail. However, as Combs's projects gained success, his goal surpassed Howard University's capacity. Driven to the breaking point, he focused on New York City, the center of the music industry. Combs launched an industrious campaign to persuade record executives to give him opportunities. At first, he wanted a job, but eventually settled for an internship. His persistence paid off when he was able to land a highly sought-after job with Uptown Records, where he was trained by the visionary Andre Harrell, the man who first created the phrase, Ghetto Fabulous. Combs commuted regularly between college and his hometown, juggling his budding business with his academic aspirations. He frequently put in long eight-hour work weeks to meet the expectations of his record executives. However, as the demands of his profession eclipsed his academic commitments. Combs made the bold decision to bid farewell to Howard University altogether. Combs' journey in the music industry traces back to the early 90s when he embarked on a humble path as an intern at Uptown Records. Combs found himself at a crossroads when MCA Records, Uptown's distributor, 
declined to release Biggie's debut album due to its grim portrayal of street life. Combs took advantage of the chance to start his own record company, Bad Boy Records, with the support of his mentor, Andre Harrell. Wallace's groundbreaking album, Ready to Die, was released by Bad Boy Records in 1994. Combs put together an in-house production crew called The Hitmen for the Album. All of it started in 1992, when Combs established the renowned record company Bad Boy with a daring ambition. This groundbreaking move catapulted him into the hip-hop stratosphere and established him as a major figure in influencing the direction of the music. Working with iconic musicians like Mary J. Bleach and the Notorious Big, Bad Boy swiftly rose to prominence, selling over 500 million albums globally and taking home an incredible array of awards, including 38 platinum singles and multiple Grammy awards. However, his tenure was short-lived as he was unceremoniously dismissed in 1993. He now owns a vast commercial empire that includes bottled water, high-end drinks, apparel, and music. With the inclusion of the incomparable Notorious Big in the Bad Boy roster, Combs solidified his status as a visionary tastemaker. However, tragedy struck amid the incredible success when Biggie passed away suddenly on March 9, 1997. But out of the depths of grief came a moving homage in the shape of I'll Be Missing You, a song Combs co-wrote with Faith Evans that shot him to international stardom. Combs was navigating a world where money and women were beckoning him as his career continued to rise, and he became enmeshed in the trappings of fame and fortune. However, despite the attraction, Combs has refused to settle down or get married, staying resolutely single. From the glamour of supermodel Naomi Campbell to the allure of model Lori Harvey, Combs' dating history reads like a star-studded affair. However, it was his passionate and high-profile relationship with Jennifer Lopez that truly captured the world's attention. Their love story was a whirlwind of red carpets, paparazzi flashes, and whispered rumors, marking them as one of Hollywood's most iconic couples. Though their paths eventually diverged, Combs has never shied away from expressing his admiration for his former flame. As Lopez has found happiness in the arms of Ben Affleck, Combs reflects on their shared history with a sense of gratitude and reverence. He considers himself fortunate to have been a part of her life, acknowledging her unparalleled beauty and charisma as a timeless masterpiece. Combs has seven children, and his path as a parent has been filled with love, difficulties, and important turning points. His first son, born in 1993 to fashion designer Misa Hilton, attended UCLA on a football scholarship and graduated in 2016. Beginning in 1994, Combs and Kimberly Porter raised Quincy, Porter's son from a previous relationship. In addition, the pair welcomed twin daughters in 2006 and a boy in 1998. 2018 saw the tragic death of Porter from pneumonia leaving Combs and their kids in mourning. Combs had a daughter with Sarah Chapman five months before the birth of his twins, for whom he assumed legal guardianship in 2007. In a poignant tribute to the enduring bond he shared with Kim Porter, Sean Combs poured out his heart, grappling with the profound loss of a cherished companion. Today, I'm going to pay tribute to you, he declared, his words resonating with a depth of emotion. Struggling to encapsulate the essence of their connection, he acknowledged that theirs was a relationship that defied conventional labels. We were more than best friends. We were more than soulmates. We were some other shit, he declared, his sentiment echoing the ineffable nature of their bond. Through his tribute, Combs sought solace in the memories of their super black love, a testament to the depth of their connection and the indelible mark she left on his heart. Four years later, Diddy honored the memory of his beloved with a poignant gesture, bestowing the name Love upon his seventh child. In December 2022, he took to X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, to share the joyous news of his daughter's arrival, Love Sean Combs. The announcement stirred curiosity and intrigue, prompting speculation about the identity of the child's mother. 
it was later revealed. In that model and cybersecurity specialist Dana Tran, 25 years Combs Jr., had welcomed the child into the world, adding a new chapter to the ever-unfolding saga of Sean Combs's life. He had a long-lasting relationship with Cassie Ventura from 2007 until 2018, which closed a big chapter in his personal life. Diddy's love for his kids is demonstrated by his lavish parties and expensive gifts, which include cars valued at hundreds of thousands of dollars for their special birthdays. Diddy and his second oldest kid accomplished a historic first in November 2022, when their songs concurrently peaked at number one on the music charts. Amidst the dazzling lights of New York City, tragedy occurred in the mosaic of Sean Combs' ascent to fame. But Combs' natural ability to cross cultural barriers and feel the pulse of the streets persisted as a pillar of his rising career, even in the face of hardship. Combs fostered a varied audience by throwing weekly daddy's house parties that drew everyone from streetwise adolescents to prestigious students from NYU and Columbia. Here, with the help of his girlfriend turned stylist Misa Hilton, Combs studied the fashion choices and dance routines of his admirers among the city's throbbing rhythms. In 1991, tragedy struck at a charity basketball event organized by Combs at Harlem City College campus. A joyful festivity swiftly descended into mayhem as 5,000 revelers crowded the arena, causing a stampede that left nine people dead and numerous others injured. Combs found himself testifying in a later case, describing the terrifying sights of terror and destruction. Even though no criminal charges were brought, Combs' popularity, however, kept rising even after this tragedy. Tensions among the rap community increased along with the rise in popularity of Bad Boy Records. Between Bad Boy and Los Angeles' Death Row Records, led by the infamous Suge Knight, a fierce rivalry sprung out when well-known death row rapper Tupac Shakur was shot five times in New York during a robbery in 1994. The conflict ignited. Combs and Wallace angrily denied any role in the incident, but Shakur accused them of knowing about it beforehand. In 1996, Tupac Shakur was fatally shot in Las Vegas followed by the death of Christopher Wallace in a drive-by shooting in Los Angeles just six months later. Conspiracy theories abound, and the circumstances of their deaths are still unknown. Combs and Biggie had left the same party that fateful night in separate cars, which aroused curiosity and conjecture that still feeds conspiracy theories today. Despite the passage of time, the East Coast-West Coast feud, the murders of Shakur and Wallace, and any potential connections to Combs remain enigmatic, leaving a lingering aura of mystery in their wake. As his star continued to ascend, Combs' personal and professional realms flourished in tandem. In 1997, he unveiled Justin's, his inaugural restaurant in New York City, a testament to his entrepreneurial spirit and culinary flair. Named in honor of his son, Justin, Born four years before his split with girlfriend Misa Hilton, the establishment became a beloved fixture in the city's dining scene. Combs was involved in a troubling altercation in 1999 that damaged his reputation. He was accused of viciously assaulting an Interscope Records executive during business hours at the Universal Music offices, leading to his arrest on felony charges of assault and criminal mischief. The victim suffered serious injuries during the encounter including head wounds, a broken jaw, and a broken arm. In the end, Combs entered a guilty plea to a lesser harassment charge and was mandated to complete a one-day anger management course. Nevertheless, the fundamental problems continued despite this action. Three months later, Combs became embroiled in an even more serious and well-publicized incident. A gunshot broke out at a nightclub in the center of bustling Manhattan nightlife and Combs was there with none other than Jennifer Lopez, the woman he had recently started dating. The evening took a dark turn when Combs and another customer got into an altercation, allegedly over remarks made against Combs' protege, rapper Shine. 
Three innocent bystanders were injured when shots were fired into the thick of the commotion, one of them being a woman who was shot in the face. Combs inadvertently carried a stolen gun that was not licensed to any of Lopez, his bodyguard, or their driver while they fled the scene in a Lincoln Navigator. Their attempt to flee the worsening chaos was short-lived as the police moved quickly to arrest the gang. The ensuing legal battle unfolded as a media spectacle, with Combs facing four counts of illegal possession of a firearm and one count of bribery. Yet, amidst the scrutiny and speculation, Combs' stature as a cultural icon was unmistakable. Supporters flooded the courthouse day after day, rallying behind their idol as the trial stretched on for seven weeks. In a climactic moment of redemption, Combs was ultimately acquitted of all charges in March 2001, eliciting an outpouring of jubilation from his devoted fans. Workers at the courthouse, overcome with emotion, threw open the windows, chanting Combs' name and pleading for him to be left in peace. For Combs, the acquittal was more than just a legal victory. It was a testament to his resilience and faith. Visibly shaken as the verdict was read, he publicly thanked God and sought solace in the embrace of his faith, reportedly attending church in the aftermath of the trial. Renowned for his sharp business sense, Sean Combs entered the liquor industry in the early 2000s with Combs Spirit. In 2007, the company entered into a profitable relationship with the world's largest beverage company, Diageo, wherein it took over the marketing and promotion of Ciroc in exchange for a portion of the earnings. 2013 saw a further development of their partnership with the purchase of DeLeon Tequila. By 2014, reports said Combs was earning an astounding $60 million a year from his beverage brands. Ciroc alone selling more than 2 million cases annually. But when Diageo started to cut its links with the entrepreneur in June of the following year, the peace in their alliance was ruptured. Accusations of coercion and bad faith tactics were levied against Combs, prompting a bitter legal dispute. During this corporate upheaval, Combs became entangled in a web of personal legal problems. The rapper was the target of growing harassment and rape charges, his Miami and Los Angeles houses were searched by police enforcement, making his absence noticeable. To make matters worse, people who were thought to be Combs's kids were arrested at his Homeby Hills home. These investigations take place amid existing legal disputes, such as the one in which an unidentified lady claims Combs and two others sexually attacked her when she was only 17. Combs vigorously denied all of the accusations characterizing them as petty attempts to obtain financial gain. Entering what would become known as the Diddy era, Sean Combs embarked on a journey of reinvention, shedding the moniker of Puff Daddy in favor of the sleek and streamlined P. Diddy. With this transformation, Combs ushered in a new era, defined by sophistication, ambition, and a relentless pursuit of excellence. In retrospect, Combs defined the Puff Daddy era as one of reckless abandon and a self-assured swagger, marked by audacity and bravery in the face of hardship. However, Diddy was keen to forge a new identity and tried to disassociate himself from the bad boy persona. A straightforward name change served as a sign of this development. His album, The Saga Continues, which was published in July, indicated that he was still traveling down the same musical path while still pursuing other artistic endeavors. Stepping into the acting field, Combs starred in two movies in 2001, one of which was the critically praised Monster's Ball, which won an Oscar for Halle Berry. But Combs's ambitions extended beyond the silver screen as he delved into the realm of artist production and reality television. By 2002, he was flying high literally and figuratively, boasting about his 14th flight aboard the Concorde and earning accolades as a menswear designer, nominated by the Council of Fashion Designers of America. Yet, even amidst his meteoric rise, Combs faced challenges on multiple fronts. His fashion empire, Sean John, encountered legal troubles, weathering allegations of sweatshop labor in Honduras the following year. Despite facing legal and personal challenges, Sean Combs, 
now known simply as P. Diddy, continued to make waves in both the entertainment industry and social activism. In 2004, he performed at the prestigious Super Bowl, showcasing his enduring influence in the world of music. Not content with merely entertaining, Diddy also spearheaded the groundbreaking Vote or Die campaign around the presidential election, leveraging his platform to promote civic engagement and political awareness. As Diddy's popularity grew, he made a significant choice to omit the P from his name, which reduced his brand to just Diddy. As a reflection of the always changing character of the multifaceted billionaire, this transformation left followers unsure of how to react to him. But in the middle of his career success, Diddy was going through personal strife. When his long-term partner, Kim Porter, gave birth to twins in 2006, their happy occasion was marred by tensions in their marriage. The arrival of the twins coincided with another significant event in Diddy's personal life, his close friend giving birth to his daughter, Chance. Diddy's relationship with Porter was strained as a result of the overlap, and their long-term affair eventually ended. Meanwhile, Diddy's professional endeavors faced a new challenge with bombshell allegations brought forth by singer Cassandra Ventura, known as Cassie, whom he had signed to his label in 2005. In a lawsuit filed in November, Cassie alleged rape, abuse, and sex trafficking, thrusting Diddy into the spotlight for all the wrong reasons. The revelation of their relationship, which began when Cassie was 19, and Diddy was 37, stirred controversy and prompted intense scrutiny of Diddy's personal life. As the dust settled on these tumultuous events, Diddy found himself navigating a storm of unwanted attention and headline frenzy. Once again, Sean Combs found himself embroiled in controversy, his actions sparking headlines and speculation. In a series of incidents that underscored the volatility of his persona, Combs faced legal troubles and public scrutiny. In a highly publicized altercation, Combs reportedly punched fellow rapper Drake in a Miami nightclub, igniting a feud over a song that escalated into physical violence. The incident, which was covered by TMZ, damaged Combs' reputation and stoked rumors about what led up to the fight. Yet Combs' legal troubles didn't end with the altercation at the Miami nightclub. Six months later, he was caught and charged with three counts of assault with a deadly weapon, one count of making terrorist threats, and one count of violence in California, where he was subject to more serious penalties. The allegations were related to an alleged assault with a kettlebell on one of his son's UCLA football coaches. Despite the severity of the allegations, prosecutors ultimately decided not to pursue felony charges against Combs. With time, Sean Combs' identity also changed, marking a new phase in his ever-changing journey. In 2017, the man who had previously gained notoriety for his immature huff behaviors started to consider making yet another change. This time, he considered dropping his prior nicknames in favor of love or brother love, names with more significance. Combs' road to self-reinvention, however, proved to be a convoluted one as he wavered in his decision until 2021. He finally revealed love as his newly adopted middle name on social media by posting a picture of his driver's license. When pressed for clarification, Combs offered only cryptic insights, proclaiming, love is a mission, hinting at a profound shift in perspective. In an unexpected turn of events, Sean Combs was suddenly back in the public eye this time as a result of intense scrutiny of his interactions with women, most notably one with a much younger age than him. Five years and three months after disclosing extensively in a candid Vanity Fair interview about the Hash Me Too movement and its influence on him, Combs was confronted with a plethora of legal issues. In November 2023, Diddy was the target of three lawsuits alleging sexual assault in the same week. One of these lawsuits was brought by Combs' ex-partner, Cassie, which he quickly settled for an undisclosed amount in less than a day. The other accusations, on the other hand, were from Combs' explosive ascent to fame in the early 1990s. 
These cases surfaced shortly before the Adult Survivors Act of New York expired, giving victims of sexual assault a one-year statute of limitations within which to file a lawsuit, regardless of when the abuse had place. The legal saga surrounding Sean Combs continued to escalate with each passing month. On December 6, 2023, another bombshell dropped as a lawsuit was filed in Manhattan District Court by a woman alleging that Combs had raped her in 2003 when she was just 17 years old. Swiftly taking to social media, Combs vehemently denied the disturbing allegations, asserting his innocence to the world. But the turmoil didn't end there. In February 2024, a fifth lawsuit emerged, this time from music producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones. Shocking in its details, the lawsuit accused Combs of drugging and sexually assaulting Jones, further alleging coercion into engaging with sex workers. In a swift response, Combs's legal team dismissed the claims as nothing short of pure fiction. However, this legal storm extended beyond Combs alone. His adult son, Justin, along with his chief of staff, Christina Coram, Universal Music Group CEO, Sir Lucian Grange, and former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia Haptamarium found themselves embroiled in Jones's lawsuit, serving as additional defendants in the complex legal entanglement. On March 1, 2024, a significant development unfolded as the plaintiff who had filed a lawsuit against Combs for the 2003 incident was ordered to reveal her identity, adding a new layer of transparency to the ongoing legal proceedings. The most shocking incidents, however, were on March 25, 2024, when the Department of Homeland Security organized a coordinated raid on residents connected to Combs in Miami, New York, and Los Angeles. Federal officials stormed Combs' residences, with a search warrant from the Southern District of New York confiscating laptops and other electronic equipment as part of an unidentified continuing investigation. That same day, Diddy was apprehended by federal investigators at Opalaka Airport and subjected to a lengthy interrogation. The Miami Herald detailed this extremely dramatic event. After several electronic devices were seized, Diddy was eventually allowed to board a flight to Antigua and Barbuda for his scheduled vacation. Just two days later, on March 27, 2024, fresh revelations emerged from documents obtained by USA Today. Lil Rod's lawsuit, which had been modified, contained startling claims against Combs, including that he had paid for the services of sex workers. Actor Cuba Gooding Jr. was also listed in the case as a co-defendant. In addition, the lawsuit used vague references to prominent individuals like Prince Harry, suggesting that they were associated with Combs' events to draw visitors, even though they were not found to have committed any violation. On April 4th, 2024, Sean Combs and his son Christian found themselves embroiled in yet another legal entanglement as they were named as defendants in a lawsuit filed by former employee Grace Omar Kay. The event that Omar Kay is alleging happened in December 2022 while she was working as a steward aboard a boat that Combs had chartered. In her lawsuit, Omar Kay accuses Christian of sexual assault, sexual harassment, and causing emotional distress during the yacht charter. Shockingly, the lawsuit also implicates Sean Combs himself, alleging that he not only aided and abetted his son in the assault, but also attempted to cover it up by paying off the victim afterward. Furthermore, the lawsuit asserts that Combs bears premises liability for chartering the yacht where the alleged sexual assault occurred. Despite vehement denials from Sean Combs' legal team, Dismissing the lawsuits as mere attempts at financial gain, it soon became evident that his legal troubles were far from resolved. In a shocking development, a former employee of Combs, Rodney Lil Rod Jones, filed a lawsuit in February alleging sexual harassment and threats. As if that weren't enough, weeks later, federal agents executed raids on Diddy's residences in Los Angeles and Miami. The raids, carried out by Homeland Security Investigations New York, were part of an ongoing investigation, although specific details were not disclosed. To date, no criminal charges have been brought against Diddy, with his legal team vehemently denouncing the raids 
as a gross overuse of military-level force. As the legal storm clouds gather ominously around Diddy, recent events have intensified speculation and ignited a flurry of rumors, with one associate arrested on drug charges. The spotlight has once again turned to Diddy, whose stoic demeanor belies the turmoil within. A recent photograph captured him in Miami, his expression betraying little amidst the swirling conjecture. For Diddy, the specter of potential incarceration is not unfamiliar territory. Throughout his storied career, he has faced and narrowly escaped prison time on multiple occasions. Yet, despite his outward resilience, there are telltale signs of unease. Those who have observed him closely recall a moment from 23 years ago, when Combs stood in a New York courtroom, his body visibly trembling before his eventual acquittal on multiple charges. In times of uncertainty, Diddy has often sought solace in the wisdom imparted by his Uncle Shrimp, as he shared with Howard students during his 2014 commencement speech. Don't be afraid to close your eyes and dream, he counseled. Drawing upon an age-old adage that speaks to the power of imagination and resilience in the face of adversity. With these words, echoing through the corridors of uncertainty, Sean Combs stands at a crossroads, his future hanging in the balance. As the world watches and waits, the legacy of Sean Combs hangs in the balance. What will become of the dreams that carried him this far? Only time will tell as the curtain rises on the next chapter of his extraordinary saga. When the engrossing tale of Diddy comes to an end, we are left with a tapestry made of the strands of success and struggle, ambition and misfortune. We have seen the quick ascent of a cultural icon through the prism of his incredible journey, a guy who dared to dream outside the boundaries of his upbringing and leave his mark on history. But there are still traces of doubt as the last chapter comes to pass. What lies ahead for Diddy, the master of reinvention? Will he weather the storm clouds of legal scrutiny unscathed, or will the issue prove to be too much for him to handle? As the pages of his story turn further, only time will tell. To all our viewers, we extend our heartfelt gratitude for joining us on this unforgettable odyssey. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more exclusive content from the Red Carpet Reup. Also leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching.